Hello, I'm going to talk to you about separations and equivalences between turnstile streaming and linear sketching. This is joint work with Eric Price. Streaming algorithms are a class of algorithms for very large data sets that arrive one piece at a time. Imagine receiving the friendship graph of some very large social network, one friendship at a time. For this talk, we're going to be concerned about the relations between different models of streaming computation. In particular, we're going to be concerned about three models. The insertion only model, in which an algorithm only has to handle additions to the data set. The turnstile model, in which an algorithm must handle both additions to and removals from the data set. And finally, the linear sketching model, in which the algorithm is required to only keep linear state, so state that is linear in all of the updates it's seen to the data set so far. And what we'll want to know is, how are these models related to each other? So in one direction, this turns out to be fairly easy. So a turnstile algorithm, by definition, can handle both additions to and deletions from the data set, and is therefore also an insertion-only algorithm. Whereas a linear sketch, because it is only allowed to keep state that is linear in all of the updates it's seen so far, has an output that only depends on the final value of the data set and is therefore indifferent to whether it receives that data set as only additions or a combination of additions and removals. To put it another way, for any problem, the amount of space used by the optimal insertion only algorithm for that problem is at most the space used by the optimal turnstile algorithm for that problem which in turn is at most the space used by the optimal linear sketching algorithm for that problem but what we want to know is are these strict containments well for the first of these two between insertion only algorithms and turnstile algorithms we can show that they're exponentially separated just by considering the minimum finding problem, where uh, you're given some vector as a series of updates to its coordinates, and you're asked to find the smallest index such that the value of that vector at that index is non-zero. Now this requires only logarithmic space in the insertion only model, but requires linear space in turnstile streaming. Now for the second relation, a surprising series of work, starting with uh, Ganguly for deterministic algorithms, extended by Lee, Wen, and Woodruff to randomized algorithms, and then extended further by Ai Hu, Lee, and Woodruff, says that these two models are essentially equivalent. That is to say, if a turnstile streaming algorithm exists for a problem, a linear sketch also exists, uses about the same amount of space. Now this is interesting because there are linear sketching problems for which we only know, for, for, for which we know how to prove lower bounds that we don't know how to prove for other models that use properties of linear sketches. For instance, there's this result by Asadi Kanali and Yaroslav, which gives a nearly quadratic lower bound for maximum matching. But there are some caveats to this result. So there are two main limitations on this reduction. The first is that the turnstile algorithm cannot be allowed to impose certain reasonable stream conditions. That is to say, the reduction only works if the turnstile algorithm is able to handle extremely long, so doubly exponentially long uh, streams that attain very large, exponentially large, intermediate values. And the second limitation is that the reduction is non-constructive. So the reduction shows that a linear sketch exists um, and that the sketch vector is of size uh, similar to the, si to the space used by the original turnstile algorithm, but it gives no way of computing the linear sketch and in fact, it does not guarantee that that linear sketch can be computed in small space. So our results in this work address both of these limitations. So firstly, for the stream conditions limitation, 
we show that if a turnstile algorithm is allowed to assume that either the stream is only linear in length or the intermediate values of the stream are suitably bounded, for instance, uh, only bind for instance, um, if the final value of the stream only takes binary values, requiring that the intermediate states of the stream also only take binary values, then there are exponential separations between turnstile streaming and linear sketching. Whereas for the constructivity problem, we make some, we make some progress towards closing that gap, showing that, if, that for deterministic streaming algorithms, if they do handle very long streams with very large intermediate values, then we can make the Ganguly equivalence constructive. So we can give an algorithm that can take a deterministic turnstile streaming algorithm and use it to efficiently calculate a linear sketch that uses similar space to the original algorithm. So for the remainder of this talk, I'm going to go into a bit more detail about both of those results. First, separations. So let's start by making our definition of a streaming algorithm a bit more formal. So we think of streaming as being you receive some very high dimensional vector x as a series of updates to individual coordinates of x. And so then the objective of a streaming algorithm is to calculate some property of x using space sublinear in its size. So you can imagine receiving this, this vector one, one coordinate update at a time. Now, Given this somewhat more formal definition, we can now uh, give more formal definitions of, of our three models. So the insertion only model now is defined as saying that every each of these updates is positive. Whereas a turnstile stream is one where these updates are both positive and negative. And finally, a linear sketch is an algorithm which only stores a linear function of the sum of all of the updates it's seen so far. So that means a linear sketch is characterized by a sketch matrix M and a post-processing function G, and it outputs GM of X. You should think of M as being some short but wide vector, so the sketch vector MX can be stored efficiently. And so then, as it processes the stream, a, the sketching algorithm applies M to each update and adds the uh, and adds M times that update to the sketch vector it is currently storing. Now, in order to make this a linear sketching algorithm um, properly efficiently computable, this of course requires that individual coordinates of M can also be calculated in small space, as M itself is going to be too large to store. So having defined our models, let's return to the requirements on the Lee, Wen, and Woodruff re reduction. So the requirements were that the algorithm had to be able to handle very large intermediate states. That is to say, as X is updated over time, individual coordinates can get exponentially large in terms of N. And it must be able to handle very long streams. So the total number of updates can be doubly exponential in N. Uh, so to, to, see, to, see the, to see what these, uh, these mean, consider the example that we started with in this talk of receiving the friendship graph of a social network, one friendship at a time. And let's now assume that we're receiving it as a turnstile stream, so we also see unfriendings as well as friendings. Well, You'll see all of these friendings and unfriendings, but one thing that you will, be, but you will still be able to say two things about this stream. One, no one is ever friends with the same person multiple times at once, nor is anyone ever negative friends with someone. So every coordinate of this adjacency matrix will, will be zero or one at all points during the stream. And secondly, you may friend and unfriend the same person. You may even friend and unfriend the same person multiple times, 
but you're certainly not going to be friending and unfriending anyone the doubly exponentially old number of times. And it's quite safe to say that on average, you're only friending and unfriending every per any given person in the world at most a constant number of times. So we can assume that the length of the stream is at most a at some constant times n. So this shows that in at least for at least some real world streams, assuming bounded magnitude or bounded length is very reasonable. So that raises the question, is the requirement that the chance algorithm not assume bounded magnitude or bounded length necessary for this equivalence to hold? And what we show is yes. There are natural requirements, relaxations of either requirement that produce exponential separations between the two models. That is to say, if you are, if you assume that either of the stream is bound, is uh, linear, in, is of length linear in n, or that it only takes su uh, sufficiently bounded intermediate values, that there is some problem for which there exists an efficient turnstile streaming algorithm and no efficient linear sketch. In fact, what we show is that for both of these models, either if we either assume either if we assume that intermediate strength, uh, stages of the stream are binary, or that the stream is of length linear in n, there is a problem that requires polynomial space for linear sketches and logarithmic space for turnstile algorithms. So we separate these two models. So how can we show this? Well. We want a problem that, that has a strong linear sketching lower bound that does not apply to general turnstile algorithms. And I should note here that if you have a strong linear sketching lower bound for a problem, even if that linear sketching lower bound is only proof for general streams, that will still apply even for problems on streams that obey the kind of stream conditions we described earlier, because a linear sketch only, it, its output only depends on the final value of the vector. And therefore, if there's a linear sketch that works on bounded length or bounded intermediate stage streams, it will also work on general streams. So secondly, we also would like this problem not to already have a good insertion only algorithm, because then we can hope to take this algorithm and extend it to turnstile streams, which obey a suitable condition. And so the problem we choose is the problem of counting triangles in bounded degree graphs. So this problem is you have a graph with n vertices, each of degree at most d, that is guaranteed to have at least t triangles, and you want to approximately count the number of triangles in this graph. In fact, we're going to consider a slightly simpler version of this problem where we'll assume that D is a constant, we'll assume that T is D to N, and we'll, we won't even ask you to count the number of triangles, we'll just uh, hear about the slightly easier problem of distinguishing between the graph having zero triangles and the graph having phi to N triangles. Now, using an algorithm of Jahari and Godsey from 2005, this problem can be solved in only log n space in an insertion only stream. And there, we also have a result saying that any linear sketching algorithm for this problem requires at least n to the one third space. So this is a good candidate. And so what we want to know is, can we modify the insertion only algorithm to work on bounded magnitude or bounded length streams? Well. To see, let's take a look at this insertion-only algorithm. So the algorithm is quite simple. You sample edges with probability p, and you keep all edges incident to one of these sampled edges, which we will call seeds. Now, the nice thing about this is that if you sample the first edge of a triangle to arrive in the stream, then you will also end up keeping the other two edges in the triangle because both of them will be incident to this first seed edge. So this means that if you want to distinguish between graphs with zero triangles and graphs with theta n triangles, you only need to set p to be theta one over n, 
because as the graph is bounded degree, if it has theta n triangles, it will have theta n distinct first edges of triangles. So setting p to be theta one over n will suffice to find one of them with good probability. And because the graph is bounded degree, this also means our space usage in this case will only be logarithmic because there's, we'll only keep a constant number of edges because we sample with probability one over n. And each of those edges will only be instant to a constant number of other edges. So we'll only keep a constant number of edges in total. And since edges only take log, log n space to store, we can, do the, we can perform the whole algorithm in log n space. Okay, so that's a nice simple insertion only algorithm. Why can't we just take this algorithm and directly apply it to turnstile streams? Well, the problem is, while the algorithm will still be correct, we can no longer guarantee that our space usage is bounded in the same way because an adversary designing a turnstile stream can use insertions and deletions to force you to keep every edge in the graph. To see how this works, imagine an adversary has access, has a, uh, a, a constant degree graph that they want to insert. Well, they can take an insertion only stream that would insert this graph, and then before every edge in the real graph, they'll insert n spurious edges instant to it. Now, because we're sampling with probability one over n, we'll probably keep one of these spurious edges. And therefore we will keep uh, the real edge because it is incident to a seed edge. Then at the very end of the stream, the adversary can, can delete off all of these spurious edges. So the final graph, is still a valid bounded degree graph. So the problem here, the reason why we ended up keeping every edge in the real graph is because the intermediate states of this stream were not bounded degree graphs. So we can avoid this bad case in one of two ways. So firstly, we could require that the stream length is only linear in N. That would mean that the adversary could only insert at most a constant number of edges on average, a, a constant number of spurious edges on average per real edge, and therefore limiting the amount of damage they can do. And sec or secondly, we could require that all intermediate stages of the stream represent bounded degree graphs. In either case, with some modifications to the original Jahari and Godsey algorithm, it turns out that it is possible to get a bounded degree triangle counting algorithm that, that, that achieves log n space given either one of these conditions. So that brings us to our, our first result, which is that if the length of the stream is linear in n, there is a problem that requires log n space for turnstile algorithms, but n to the one third space for linear sketches. And in fact, it turns out it's possible to extend this uh, separation a little bit further. For streams up to length n to the seven sixths, or almost n to the seven sixths, there is still a separation, albeit no longer an exponential one. Secondly, we show that for turnstile for streams that only take binary intermediate values there is a problem that can be solved in log n space but by turnstile algorithms and requires almost n to the one third space for linear sketches now you may note that the condition we imposed earlier was not that intermediate values be binary but rather that all intermediate values of the stream represent bounded degree graphs but it turns out you can embed a hard instance of the triangle counting problem into a problem for binary vectors. And then this will allow you to replace that condition with the condition that intermediate stages of the stream be binary vectors and still get this separation. Furthermore, you can take this uh, problem on binary vectors and you can encode them in vectors 
in minus bb to the n. And that will let you replace this binary intermediate value condition with the requirement that intermediate states lie in a, in, in a box that is uh, slightly smaller than 2b. So allowing somewhat larger boxes than the, the, binary, the binary box and still get an exponential separation. So those are our two separation results. And uh, now I'm going to talk to you a little bit about our equivalence result. So the Ganguly uh, result and the Lee Wen and Woodroffe result both have the form of saying, if, I, if you have a space S turnstile algorithm that solves some stream problem, an N by O tilde of S sketch matrix and a corresponding recovery function exists that also solve the problem. But what they don't guarantee is that, these, that, is that the sketch in, in question is efficiently computable. Now, for some applications, this doesn't matter. If, if, all I, if what I want to do is take a lower bound for a linear sketch and extend that to a lower bound for turnstile streaming algorithms, well, those lower bounds tend to come from either communication complexity or information theory, neither of which care about whether the linear sketch can be efficiently computed. So these will still directly go through. But what this does leave open is the possibility that there is some problem for which there is an efficiently computable turnstile algorithm, but there is no efficiently computable linear sketch. So what we do is in the case where the algorithm is deterministic, we extend this Ganguly result, we give a constructive version of the reduction. That is, we show that if you have the, a, a, a deterministic turnstile algorithm, there is another algorithm that can use that algorithm to compute a linear sketch of, si of, uh, of size, of the right size, uh, that, only use, that can compute it using only slightly more space than is required by the original turnstile algorithm. Now, this re reduction does require that the algorithm be able to handle very long streams with very large intermediate states, as was the case in the randomized equivalents. But for total functions, it turns out you can actually do better. In that case, we only need the algorithm to, to work on streams that are of length very slightly longer than the minimum length you would need to insert any vector of dimension n. So one additional note about this reduction. Uh, previously, we've been talking about a sketch matrix. So therefore, implicitly, a linear sketch was a Z-module homomorphism from Z to the N to some product of modules ZAI. Our reduction will take the form of a general Z-module homomorphism from Z to the N to some small module M. Um, which will therefore still have all the properties you want from a linear sketch. And by the structure theorem on Z modules, will be the module will be isomorphic to some product of module ZAI, and therefore there is some corresponding sketch matrix, but that isomorphism is not necessarily computable efficiently, even though our sketch is. So that's, that's our equivalence result. So now, Let's, uh, let's review and wrap up. So we have three results here, two exponential separations for bounded magnitude streams, streams uh, where, where, for instance, when all stages of the stream are binary vectors, for bounded length streams, so when the stream length is linear in N, and we have a constructive equivalence for deterministic turnstile algorithms. So one natural thing to ask is, is it possible to extend this constructive deterministic equivalence to randomized turnstile algorithms? Another question is, we have um, this separation when the stream length is linear in N, and we know that there's an equivalence when the stream length is doubly exponential in N, but that leaves a lot of space between these two ends. So one, Interesting question is, 
what is the the correct uh, the correct length for this this result? What is the point at which separations become equivalences between linear length and doubly exponential length? And one thing that might shed some light on this is this result by Haseni, Levet, Yaroslav, and Yaroslavtsev for uh, for exhaust streams. This is a uh, special kind of turnstile stream where your vector is binary and rather than seeing updates to the vector with plus or minus signs, you instead see updates that just say um, flip the value of this bit of the binary vector. Now in this model they show that there is an equivalence for only quadratic length streams. So it would be very interesting to see first if our separation can be extended to this model for linear length streams, and if so, whether it's possible to find a tight answer in between linear and quadratic length streams for where separations become equivalences. So this is all I have to say. Thank you for listening.